Hi, Bobby here, and in this lesson, we're gonna learn the outro solo to the studio version of Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb. Now, having toured for many years with two of the most popular Pink Floyd tribute acts, I know that Pink Floyd fans are a discerning bunch. So I will say that this is not a performance, this is a tutorial, so there's no band, light show, you know, lasers, mirror bore, or anything. It's just me breaking down this solo as accurately as I can. And we're gonna be working mainly around the B minor pentatonic scale and its various positions with an added ninth or an added second, in this case, this uh, C sharp note. Now it's assumed that you have some prior knowledge of the fundamental techniques such as string bending, vibrato, and some of the scales we're gonna use. Um, I will break everything down note for note, but if you need to learn those techniques, if you need to learn the scales, uh, click this link below. This is my website that just has an extensive uh, library of everything you need to know um, to play this kind of music and the blues and rock music. So um, without further ado, let's break it down and we'll start learning Comfortably Numb. So we'll start with the opening. It's gonna be a clean sound for this. So, um, we enter that with, uh, it's actually a pinch harmonic, um, which involves having less of the pick exposed and picking and actually hitting your, the fleshy part of your thumb on the string at the same time and you'll get that squeak, hopefully. Um, it's not the end of the world if you miss it, but it's very characteristic of a solo. That's going to be seven on the G to nine and then a whole step bend on nine. Give it some vibrato. You can use your whammy bar for vibrato or you can use your fingers. Um, I tend to, I don't tend to apply whammy bar vibrato in exactly the places where Gilmore would in the solo. It's down to personal preference, but I do use it for some of the phrases. So hold that bend and then. So you've got, you bend again on nine on the G, release. pull off to seven, and then nine on the D string, and then back to seven on the G, and then quite an erratic phrase. Listen to the original for the exact phrasing. So that's uh, on the G string, it's um, nine, hit that twice, and then seven on the G, and then nine twice on the D, and back to seven on the G, and you can kind of tease that slightly sharp, not too sharp. Then we have. So we go into this next position of the uh, B minor pentatonic scale. So we actually slide up to 11 on the G. So 11G, 10B, 11G, 10B, to 12B. And then we have a big tone and a half bend. So you're bending up a minor third. Um, so you're bending up the equivalent of three frets, bending up to this, bending this B note up to this uh, D note. A bit very Gilmore, funnily, funnily enough. And release it. So when you release it, you pull off to 10 and then back to on the B and then back to 11 on the G and then 10B and then hammer to 12B. And then we have, so just a blues lick there, back in our box position. So that's seven to nine on the G. And then that's a bend um, on nine on the G. That's actually a whole step bend. But if it's a little bit flat, it doesn't matter because it's kind of a blues thing. And then release, pull off to seven. And then back to uh, nine on the D. And then we have this uh, triplet minor pentatonic rundown. 
So that's uh, 10 on the B, pull off to 7, and then 9 G, back to 7 on the B, and then that's 9, pull off to 7 on the G, and then 9 on the D string, give it some whammy bar vibrato. So. That's our next phrase. So that's slide from seven to nine on the A string. And then that's uh, seven twice on the D. And then nine on the G, on the D, sorry. And then that's seven on the G. Tease that slightly sharp. And then that's nine, pull off to seven, back to nine on the D string. Then we have this. So I'll break that down one little bit at a time. So it's a rake. Um, you want to bar your um, first finger across the top three strings on the seventh fret and just rake across, you can roll your finger over, it's a kind of sweep, sweep picking thing, which is kind of beyond the remit of this tutorial, but not the end of the world if you just, you know, do that, but if you roll your finger over, and then you pick up nine on the high E string, bend up half a step, release it, pull off to seven, and then 10 B to uh, 7 high E. And then bend up a whole step on 10 on the B string. And then we finish it with, well actually we go into the next phrase with this. So it's uh, 10, pull off to 7 on the B, and then uh, 9 on the G. Then we have, That's the first of our long triplet pentatonic licks. Excuse my hybrid picking, it's just something I do. Um, Gilmore probably would have picked every note. Doesn't really make a, a huge difference in this context with the amount of gain you're gonna be using. But just in case the Pink Floyd police, uh, you know, kind of pull me up on that one. So that's, um, you bend up a whole step on nine on the G. And then you've got this partial bar, uh, which is um, seven on the B, seven on the high E. And then that's um, 10 on the B string. Pull off to seven. So, so the next bit, that's... Um, it's a kind of half step bend, you can do a whole step bend, um, but that's uh, on nine on the G. It's actually a half step bend. So you bend, release, pull off to seven, and then nine on the D string. And then nine, pull off to seven on the G, back to nine on the D. So, uh, so putting, putting it together with the previous phrase, and then, that's just a kind of blue scale rundown. So that's uh, seven on the G. You can tease that slightly sharp and then, I'm uh, sorry. And then, that's nine to seven on the D. Then a chromatic rundown, uh, nine, eight, seven on the A string, down to five on the A, and tease that slightly sharp. So if you put that together slowly. And then we have. Another quite erratic uh, lick. Starts with um, jingle bells, 
<laughs> on the nine, um, sorry, on seven on the G. You want to hit that and kind of, you know, it's very staccato. So you're not going, you're, you know, really kind of aggressively cutting the notes off. Um, and then we have this classic uh, blues lick. So bend up whole step on the uh, on nine on the G. And this partial bar again, which is um, seven high E. Then we have 10 D, pull off to seven, and a hammer on from nowhere. So it's not kind of um, preceded by a, a, a hammer on a pull off or it's not picked. Just hammer on to the um, G uh, on nine. So and then we have this half step bend on nine on the G, uh, pull off. So bend, release, pull off to um, seven, and then hammer on to uh, nine on the D. That's the next bit. So very, again, very staccato. Um, that's the first part. So that's nine G. You can tease this. Uh, seven on the G slightly sharp um, and then that's nine pull off to seven on the D and then nine on the A string and then so and then I pick up uh, seven on the A string with the first finger and then slide it down to five on the A. You can do this, but it's easier to get out of the previous lick, so. And then that's seven, pull off to five on the A, and then seven on the low E. And then five A, seven A. Then we have so actually just to give it its full uh, duration. So that's nine on the A. You kind of slide in from seven and then hit uh, seven on the D a bunch of times. Three times, sorry. Um, that's nine uh, D seven tease that slightly sharp on the G and then back to nine on the D so and then back to seven on the G and then again this blues lick So let's bend up a whole step on uh, nine on the G. And then this partial bar again. So five, uh, sorry, seven B, seven high E. 10 B. Then you bend up a whole step on nine on the G. And then seven on the B. Back to seven on the G, and then uh, nine G, uh, seven G, and then we have the second of our long uh, blues triplet runs, which is very similar to the previous one. Um, very similar. In fact, I probably don't need to break it down if you know the previous one because you've got. It's exactly the same, just with an A note at the end, um, which is on the fifth fret on the low E. So, you know, kind of, it's very, again, very abrupt when that comes in. And then we come into this uh, territory, which is the uh, double stops. 
So that's um, you're barring the top three strings on the seventh fret, but you're only really interested in the G and the B strings. So, so hit those and then then nine on the D string. Give it some whammy bar vibrato. And you do it again, but you kind of proceed it with a little scratch. So if you know how to mute. So if I put that whole phrase together. Two, three, four. So you do it a third time. Um, but then you go this double stop and then nine on the uh, D and then back to this double stop. So two, three, and four. And then so again, it's um, back in this uh, uh, B minor pentatonic box shaped territory. So uh, you bend um, G up a whole step on the ninth fret, release it and pull off to seven, and then nine on the D, and then seven, nine, uh, and then bend up from nine. So, and then another classic uh, David Gilmour. Lick, so that's um, seven on the high E, 10 B, pull off to seven on the B. Bend up a whole step on uh, 10 on the B. And then we have uh, our third uh, triplet rundown, which is slightly different to the previous two. So it's uh, slightly longer. That bit is exactly the same. So I don't need to break that down. And then we have. So. That's um, 7G and then uh, 9 on the D, pull off to 7 on the D. And then 9 to 7 on the D again. So to nine on the A. So and then from there, it's just a, a blue scale rundown if you know your blue scale and its various positions. So that's uh, seven D chromatic rundown nine eight seven on the A. Slide your first finger down to five on the A string and finish off with seven on a low E. One more time. So our next section we have So coming out of this triplet rundown, you quickly have to pick up a nine on the D, and then this double stop again, um, seven on the G and B strings. And you give it a quick uh, 16th note scratch, and hit that double stop again. You can tease that slightly sharp, you know, use your ears, it's a very bluesy thing. And then you hit that double stop again, and then it's seven on the um, D string. You can use the same finger. So. So that's uh, nine on the D, seven to nine on the G. Bend up a uh, whole step on nine on the D. G, 
um, and then that's um, nine pull off to seven on the G and then down to nine on the D string so and then we hit that double stop again and then nine pull off to seven on the D and then nine on the A string so um, So next time around, that's seven to nine on the D, and then this figure again, um, and you do it again. You can do that figure a third time, but I'm hearing this, um, which is uh, double stop on nine on the G and B strings, pulling off to seven on the G and B string. Back to our root note on nine on the D. So putting it all together very slowly. Um, and then we have this. Now, these um, funky things that David Gilmore does a lot, I believe you can take a little bit of artistic license with it. Now, obviously, the uh, some of the um, more discerning Pink Floyd fans might comment and say, well, oh, no, it has to be exactly the same as on the record. But I think as a rule of thumb, whoever the guitarist is, the, whose solos you happen to be learning, if he or she takes artistic license live and plays a different phrase then you know you have every right to do that because you know there are so many recorded versions of comfortably numb where david gilmore would play a slightly different thing um so you know he was just probably just going for it in the studio um so that's what i'm hearing so that's a funky and then, and then the next bit is kind of a little bit, a little bit freer. And I believe the next phrase, the high note, may or may not have been, please don't correct, please don't at me, um, may or may not have been an overdub. Um, it sounds to me like a punch in. Um, you know, it sounds like a drop in where uh, it's it's all very it's very sudden that he's suddenly um, you know an octave higher. But you can get there. So I mean, what I did on the playthrough is um, just that. I might have given it an another couple at the end um, before getting to this note. So that brings us to our high part. So it's this B note. Um, I'm actually bending uh, this A note on the s on the 17th fret on the high E. I'm bending up a whole step. You know, going into that phrase. Um, but you can actually, he may have bent this, uh, he may have bent to this B note up on the 22nd fret, although I doubt it because he may have played this with a 21 fret guitar. Um, but if you have 22 frets and you and you have access to the higher frets, then you know rather than jumping around, you can do it here. Now that phrasing's quite random, and again, it's one of those artist artistic license things. I I feel. Um, so we go. Um, 19 uh, to 21 on high and then we're bending up half a step on the 21st fret bending it hitting it a few times releasing it you can make it cry a couple of times so you know give it some pre-bending as long as you're hitting the pitch And the, the end of that phrase comes a little bit late. Sounds really cool when he does it. Um, I, I was unable to replicate that in my playthrough. Um, I was a little bit early with that, but that's 19 on the high E. Uh, hammer on to 21 and then back to 19. And then we have this phrase. 
So it's preceded by a couple of kind of scratches, you know, percussive. Um, I was just hovering over, I think, over the uh, uh, 17th fret on the B before hitting the 17th fret on the B. And then you bend up uh, a whole step. And again, and then release and pull off to 15. To um, 16 on the G. So that's 15 B to 17 B. And then you can play that down here. In fact, you can, you can play this whole phrase down here. You know, if you know the neck well enough, um, it may have been played there, but I just do it here. And then blues lick. So that's um, 15 on the B string. You can tease that slightly sharp in staccato. And then um, 17 on the B. And then we have, so that's a whole step bend on 17. Release. And then pull off to 15. And then down to uh, 16 on the G. I actually gave it some whammy bar vibrato there. I mean, we're in fade out territory now, but let's just look at the last few phrases that you can hear on the recording. And then we have. So that's a, a B minor pentatonic rundown. So that's uh, 10 to uh, uh, 12 on the B string. A grace note slide almost immediate slide from 11 down to nine on the G. And then seven G to nine on the D string. And then back up to 12 on the B string. I mean, you can pick it up there. You can pick up this B note if you know the neck well enough, but it seems to get there very quickly, so it's kind of a jump. That's what I'm hearing. There's not really much of a slide, but if you want to slide, I mean, that's probably a more natural thing to do. And then we have another blues lick. So that's um, 10 on the high E to 12 on the B. And then that's uh, bend up a whole step on 12 on the high E and then 12 unbent, and then 10 to 12, all on the high E. Then back down to 12 on the B string. And then right on the fade out, you have this. You know, which is another one of those kind of erratic, really cool licks. Um, so it's a, a tone and a half bend on 12 on the B string and then release it and then 12 B, 10 B. Um, and then have this rundown, which is a grease note slide from 11 uh, down to nine on the G, pull off to seven and then nine on the D string. So. And then we do this again, similar phrase, same rhythm. At nine G, pull off to seven and then to nine on the D. So, and then we have, so same rhythm, same thing as you did on the, this group of strings, but moving down to the next group of strings. So it's um, nine D, pull off to seven D, to nine on the A. And then that's um, seven A, pull off to five, and then to seven on the low E, and then five to seven on the uh, A string. So, and then you have. Um, Uh, 
just funking away. <laughs> um, so uh, it's, um, I'll play it up to tempo. Uh, three, four. You know, just kind of really having fun with that, with that uh, triad, that B minor triad that, we, that we've encountered previously in this solo. So in other words, it's a bar across the seventh fret on the top, three strings. I mean, you can be free with it, you know, you can add your own rhythm. I've seen various tribute bands and various versions of this uh, solo played by great guitarists who have, you know, done their own thing with it. And then, that's what you hear right at the end, which is this uh, B minor pentatonic rundown. Which is seven high E to 10 on the B string. And bend up a whole step on nine on the G. Release it and then play nine unbent. And then uh, seven G to nine on the D string and just give it some whammy bar vibrato. So, of course, that was the studio version of the solo as opposed to the extended pulse version. But uh, a lot of Pink Floyd cover bands, tribute bands, tend to play an extended version of this solo. And um, I've seen a lot of people play the studio solo all the way to the fade out and then kind of edit in the pulse version. And that's a really good way to approach it because you kind of get the best of both worlds and the audience can kind of latch onto something very, very familiar before, you know, kind of going off the charts with the, uh, with the brilliant brilliant pulse version as well. Now, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content, regular content. I have a, a series called Lickorama in which I uh, teach you guitar licks a couple of times a week. And if you're looking for a truly immersive blues guitar course, here's a quick word about my website. Cheers, guys. I'll see you soon. If you've ever wanted to play the blues with all the emotion of your favourite guitarists, or if you're keen to join in a jam night and just need a bit more confidence, Absolute Blues Guitar has you covered. We offer an immersive course and whether you're a beginner or an experienced player, we're committed to making an authentic blues guitarist out of you. Everything we teach is broken down note for note, written out in tab and standard notation and accompanied by high quality backing tracks. We give you all the tools you need to play classic blues and beyond. There really is nothing missing. My name's Bobby Harrison. I'll be your teacher and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you inside. Thank you.